Hello, my name is David Townsend. And I'm Larry Dante, hello. While it is very unfortunate that we cannot be there with you in person right now, due to the continued safety precautions, we are very glad that the JALT International Conference is allowing us all the chance to share our ideas and research as best we can. Today we are going to uh, present uh, our findings from our first uh, preliminary uh, foreign uh, presenting in a foreign language anxiety scale. This was a very ambitious project, but hopefully we can uh, explain it clearly to you and if possible we could get some feedback from all you watching. Well, all right, now I'm going to talk about uh, anxiety and uh, presentations. Now here um, in 2014 Chapman uh, had a survey of Americans uh, of their phobias and uh, if you look at this you can see that public speaking at the top here uh, is the highest. They were very afraid uh, or anxiety ridden from public speaking and I just want to point out uh, down below that in drowning you know public speaking uh, uh, causes more anxiety than drowning in Americans. So as you can imagine, this is a very uh, tough task, difficult task for our students. Now um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, anxiety in the classroom and in the foreign language context. Uh, however, just like to say that if you would like a more in-depth analysis or review of research, um, in the references, references section at the end, uh, we have our, our paper. David and I wrote a paper about it. Uh, if you're interested, we'd be happy to provide it to you later. What I would like to just highlight here is, as you might know, um, foreign language anxiety is, is a unique uh, feature of language learning. Now, I would like to highlight a couple of features of uh, types of anxiety in the foreign language classroom. First of all, there's receiver anxiety, and this just uh, briefly means that the, the uh, speaker is worried about the, that they will not be understood or be misunderstood. The next one is communication anxiety. I think you can guess. Generally, uh, when they're communicating, especially in the foreign language, they feel anxiety. Next one is fear of peer evaluation, losing face, being evaluated. And then the final one is test anxiety. Um, you know, from the name, you can understand that when they take a test, they feel particularly nervous. Next, I would like to uh, explain a little bit about the class um, that we gave the scale to and had them answer. First of all, this is a uh, discussion and presentation skills based class. Um, it is uh, twice a week, 90 minutes a week, and uh, it's roughly uh, divided into half discussion skills, half presentation skills. These are second year uh, university students. They are English majors. This is a compulsory class. The entire uh, second year has to take this class. Five classes uh, with three teachers, Another uh, important feature of the class is peer support, peer fear feedback, and uh, the average TOEIC score in their first year when they came to us was uh, roughly 400, 405. Um, but this is the second semester of their second year, so they would have uh, more uh, training and more education in English. I'd just like to take a minute now to explain what exactly this scale is trying to measure. As I mentioned earlier, it's quite ambitious. But uh, what we want to do is to basically understand in our presentation class what aspects of the class, what aspects of the situation make our students nervous. Are we able to ascertain what exactly makes them nervous and then we'd like to, in the future, conduct action research or to change our uh, curriculum to make uh, 
the classroom less anxious for the students so they can focus more on becoming better presenters. Now, one of the first things we are gonna look at is presentation skills. If providing these presentation skills, does it make the students feel more comfortable and therefore less anxious? Next, we're going to be looking at planning and structuring the presentations. If we explain to them very carefully how to plan, how to structure a presentation, will this once again lower their anxiety? Next, preparation. We're, what we're very interested in knowing how much preparation is useful for the students. And of course, too much present, uh, preparation might make it boring. So we want to know, is there a, re is there a good uh, point for the preparation in class, of course. Next, peer support and peer assessment. In our class, the students in the practice stage, in the preparation practice in stages, they watch each other's presentations and they give each other feedback to try to help them, to try to help them understand what they need to improve and some things maybe they want to stop doing if possible. The teacher, of course, also provides feedback but once again, we want to know, does this make it, is this too anxious, uh, too uh, kind of, uh, does it lower their, uh, does it increase their anxiety too much? And, and providing models. Um, if the teacher provides useful models, does this help the students understand clearly what we want them to do? And will this help them once again become less anxious? And finally, classroom atmosphere. We're very interested in knowing what kind of atmosphere uh, might make the students feel more comfortable, therefore once again lowering the anxiety. So these are the things that we're going to be looking at trying to measure through our scale. During our research, we came across many uh, foreign language anxiety scales, but to the best of our knowledge, we could not find any presenting in a foreign language anxiety scale. That, of course, uh, was the, the reason that we decided to undertake this project. Now, the presenting in the foreign language anxiety scale consists of 26 items using a five-point Likert scale, which ranges from strongly agree to strongly disagree. Two of the items are independent. They are language related, and I'll explain this a little bit more later. 12 of the, of the items are what we refer to as negatively loaded items, and 12 of them are positively loaded items. These are ex uh, essentially opposite pairs, and once again, I'll explain that in a moment. In this slide, you can see all of the questions. Once again, the two green ones are the independent. They refer to language and they are not measured in the scale, but it is something that we're interested in finding out. The uh, positively loaded items are the blue and the negative are the red. And once again, each there's a set of opposite pairs for each item looking to help with internal consistency. And of course, they were randomized before the, uh, before the uh, scale was created. This slide shows how the uh, items are scored. Now, in the negatively loaded items, a strongly agree would get a five, and a strongly disagree would be a one. However, the positively loaded items are scored it's inverted, and a strongly agree would get a one. On the other hand, a strongly disagree would get a five. Within this scheme, if a student has high anxiety, uh, they would once again score higher on the negatively loaded items, and they should score low, lower on the positively loaded items, giving them a generally lower score. If they have high anxiety, on the other hand, they should get a relatively higher score. This slide attempts to show you uh, very clearly how the scoring works with a simple example, of course, and uh, 
if you like ice cream for example item one I love ice cream if if you like ice cream like I do you would answer strongly agree now the opposite the, the opposite paired question for example item number two I hate ice cream you would of course answer strongly disagree and once again we have these pairs to try to uh, make sure that there's internal consistency within this uh, scale okay next I would like to talk about um, the uh, levels of anxiety that we got from our uh, the administration of our scale um, it was administrated uh, in the first semester beginning of the first semester and as you can see it was uh, 70.2 and then it was administered again uh, at the end of the first semester and it went to 68.9 now um, to be uh, honest we're not sure about what is a high level of anxiety um, so we're going to need more data and more research to determine that but um, there was a difference uh, of uh, minus 1.3 so it went down 1.3 the second time we administered it and uh, we believe that this shows a trend towards less anxiety at the end this slide shows all of the items on the left column and the first and the second administration in the next two columns and finally on the far right it is the average variance and as you can see the uh, first and second administration the items there is they're almost identical in they're very very close which shows I think that the uh, scores were consistent from the first and the second and the average variance was only 0.12 which I think was quite remarkable and once again shows consistency in the scoring now it's going to take us time to review all of the findings and to analyze the data completely but we would like to share some notable findings with you some things that just stood out to us initially now as I mentioned before items 11 and 18 these were not used in the grading of the scale they did not add to the scales but we wanted to understand if the students felt any more anxieties presenting in, in a foreign language in English in our case or if it was if th th there was no difference and just from the preliminary results we feel that basically the students didn't really care uh, an, an average score would be three on the Likert scale I don't care and as you can see in the first and the second of item 11 I prefer giving a presentation in my first language they didn't seem to really care item 18 was a little, slightly less but once again they didn't really seem to care so much this was quite remarkable to Larry and I that the students don't seem to be uh, that presenting in, an, in a foreign language or presenting in their native language doesn't seem to create any more anxiety this will need further of course study but we found that quite interesting another one of our notable findings is um, item 15 and 26 um, now again um, these are opposite pairs and item 15 as you can see a relaxed classroom atmosphere lowers my anxiety in this case a low score shows more anxiety because of the inverted score and then item 26 a strict classroom atmosphere makes me feel nervous in this case a high score um, shows more anxiety and as you can see um, the atmosphere in the classroom is very important um, and uh, one aspect of that of course is our role as teachers we have to create a, an atmosphere that is positive and friendly and 
um, to increase the confidence of the students and lower their effective filters and lower the anxiety. Um, we are, through further research, we hope to explore various aspects of, of classroom atmosphere. But um, one other thing we're interested in is um, the peer feedback. Um, we uh, should give the students uh, more training. So for example, um, train them to give very constructive, positive feedback that leads to more confidence and less anxiety uh, versus or in contrast to you know, highly uh, critical or particularly critical uh, uh, overly aggressive um, feedback. So again, um, we want to explore this, this type of uh, feedback and this, the teacher's role, the student role in giving, making a positive atmosphere and, and making a constructive, um, supportive environment. The previous slide and items were about classroom atmosphere. Um, now item 21 and item 7 are about uh, the structure of a presentation. Um, the students, uh, as you can see here from the scores, uh, reacted very strongly to this. In other words, they uh, really feel that they would like to know about the uh, structure of the presentation. Um, so we believe that a more explicit uh, instruction about, for example, introductions and bodies and conclusions and how to connect ideas together, um, the overall um, structure of a presentation should help um, students uh, to feel less anxious and more prepared. Of course, we, we uh, have to um, collect more data and we have to do this in our classrooms, but it is very interesting that the students do want more explicit instruction about the structure of presentations. Our next notable finding is unique in that we found a flaw in our uh, scale. And these are supposed to be mirror opposites, item number five and item number two. And they are looking at measuring the students, uh, how they feel about uh, presentation skills, the explicit teaching of presentation skills. If they feel very confident in what they're supposed to do as far as the skills, eye contact, uh, speaking pace, etc., that maybe they would feel more confident. Now, both of these questions actually have very good consistency, but as we explained before, item number two is a negatively loaded question. It should have elicited a high score, but the wording of the question was a little bit ambiguous. I do not need to learn presentation skills. If the students believe strongly that's true, they would have answered low. And uh, this was a bit of a flaw. Now, once again, uh, question uh, item number five, I'm sorry, understanding what skills make a presentation effective helps me do a better job. And item two, I do not need to learn presentation skills, basically are asking for the same kind of information. Once again, they're very consistent, but this will affect the score of the presentation uh, of the scale. Therefore, at the bottom, we are offering up a differently worded question uh, item, I'm sorry, that we would like to use in future iterations of this scale. And once again, uh, this is just an idea, but we might offer an item such as not knowing what presentation skills are important lowers my confidence. Now, once again, with this type of wording, if they felt strongly that they agree with this, they would answer, of course, higher. And once again, unfortunately, this was a flaw in our scale. And this was something that we did anticipate, of course. It's a very, very uh, difficult thing to put together. And uh, it will be something that will change in the future. And of course, if any of you can find anything else that might need tweaking, we'd be very happy to uh, accommodate your ideas.
Okay, now I would like to talk about uh, the biggest changes that we saw. Um, this is item 18, and as you can see, I feel less nervous presenting in my second language, English. At the uh, beginning of the first semester, that was the score 2.59. At the end of the first semester, 2.94. So this uh, is a change uh, in variance of three times the average variance, which was about 12.12, uh, 12, and this is 0.35. So this is the largest change. And uh, we believe from this, uh, after a semester of uh, instruction in English and practicing presentations in English, um, they seem to feel less nervous. And uh, overall, um, that's a, a very good trend, we believe. And our final big change was item number 24. If I make a mistake while presenting, I am not able to focus. And in the first administration of this scale at the beginning of the first semester, it was 3.63. And after one full semester of instruction, it fell to 3.33, which was a change of 0 0.30 minus 0 0.30 and once again this was almost three times the average variance and we believe that this lowering <clears throat> excuse me lowering of anxiety after one semester of instruction uh, that the uh, effect of our class had the, uh, allowed the students to feel less anxiety when they make a mistake they didn't feel as much anxiety and they felt more comfortable proceeding. And uh, once again, this was a positive trend and hopefully it will be something that will continue in the next semester. Well, thank you very much everyone for watching. And uh, once again, this was a very ambitious project. There's uh, some trials and tribulations and uh, we're going to be changing and tweaking it in the future. Uh, as I mentioned before, if uh, you find anything that might need addressing, please contact us. Here is a uh, list of our references used in this presentation, and our emails are also provided if you'd like to contact us for anything. Thank you for watching and listening, and again, um, David and I would really like to do some action research in the future. And one of our main goals is to um, ascertain some, some distinct aspects of the classroom um, that we'll, we could do some research on and work on uh, to make you know, better classrooms, uh, better FLA, and then also better presentations among our students. Um, thank you again. Contact us if, if you need anything in the future. All right, please enjoy the rest of the conference and hopefully next year we can see you in person. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.